What's going on everyone? My name is Obi and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast. Today we're talking about one of what might be one of the most strategic launches in the EV world. So today on July 10th, NEO launched their pre-sales for their flagship SUV, the Envol L90, uh, which is obviously under their sub-brand for the mass market Envol. So everyone, this isn't just another EV launch. This is something that is intended to shake up the entire Chinese EV family car market. Let me paint a picture for you of what just happened here because the timing and pricing here happened with a surgical precision. So here's the context, Li Auto, one of uh, China's most dominant new energy vehicle companies has dominated the family SUV market with their extended range vehicle. They've been printing money with models like the L9, which start at around 409,000 yuan. The Li Auto announced launching their first pure electric SUV, the Li i8 on July 29th. Neo saw this coming from miles away and what was the response? Well, it was the Envo L90 pre-sales 18 days before Li Auto's big reveal. It's not a coincidence, that's strategic warfare, but here's where it really gets interesting the Envo L90 starts at 279,900 yuan with the 85 kilowatt hour battery pack that's about 39,000 USD and if you know anything about the Chinese EV market you know that's aggressively priced for everything that this vehicle offers but here's the kicker with Neo's battery as a service program the L90 starts at around 193,000 yuan we're talking about a three-row family SUV that can compete directly with Li Auto's offerings at around half the price point. William Lee, Neo CEO, had previously said that the L90 will be priced below 300,000 yuan, but even the most optimistic analyst didn't expect it to come in this low. And here's the thing, Neo's following the industry playbook where pre-sale prices typically drop further towards official launch. So we might see this thing get even more cost competitive. Now let's talk about what you're actually getting for that money because this is where the story gets uh, really competitive considering the technology. The L90 measures 5,145 millimeters long, 1,998 millimeters wide, and 1,786 millimeters high with a 3,110 millimeter wheelbase. Compare that to Lee Otto's L9 at 5,218 millimeters long with a 3,105 millimeter wheelbase. We're talking about a similar interior space at a slightly more compact package. But here's where it gets interesting. The L90's curb weight ranges from 2,250 to 2,385 kilograms. The Lee I8, 2,580 to 2,610 kilograms. That's a 300 to 400 kilogram difference. Less weight means more efficiency, better performance, and better range. And the numbers absolutely back this up. The two-wheel drive version achieves 14 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. That's class-leading energy consumption. And the all-wheel drive version pumps out 440 kilowatts of power and does 0 to 100 kilometers in 4.7 seconds. And don't let me forget that it'll go 605 kilometers on a full charge. And here's where Neo's been playing the long game and what I think a lot of people are missing. Lee Otto's building cars, Neo's building an ecosystem. Neo now has 3,400 battery swapping stations in China with a thousand of those along highway. They've got 2,884 supercharging stations and 1,776 destination charging stations. That's infrastructure that Lee Otto simply can't match overnight. Lee Otto's been scrambling to catch up with 2,866 supercharging stations but here's the thing, they just don't have battery swapping stations. When you're trying to sell a family SUV to people who take long road trips with their family, that infrastructure advantage is real. Now something really interesting is happening here in the design philosophy that tells us about how these companies think about their customer. The L90 SUV is something that we call a boxy SUV, that traditional design that customers love. The Li i8, well, Li Auto CEO said that they went with an MVP design to make sure that they're getting the most efficiency out of the vehicle. But here's where William Lee threw some shade at his competitor. During the L90 launch, he basically said, look, we've achieved better efficiency through better engineering and lightweight design not by making our SUV look like a minivan. That's a direct shot at Li Auto's design choices and it reveals 
something very particular about market positioning. Neo's betting that Chinese families want their SUVs to look like SUVs, not a practical box. But here's where we need to be objective about what comes next. Li Auto has a reputation for being incredibly efficient at execution. They announce a product, they start delivering fast. Neo's been more let's say deliberate with their timelines. But Envo seems to have learned from this show cars are already available at Envo's stores and they're promising that deliveries will start August 1st, just days after the official launch. Neo's taking a page from Lee Otto's books. Fast execution, immediate delivery, no waiting around for months after announcement. Let's zoom out and talk about what this all means for the broader market. The Chinese family SUV segment is becoming more and more competitive. Li Autos had this space largely to themselves with their extended range vehicles, but pure electric is where the market's heading. The L90 puts Li Auto in a real difficult position. How do you price the Li i8 when your competitor just came in 130,000 yuan below your flagship? Do you match the pricing and hurt your margins, or do you maintain your premium positioning and lose market share. This is what happens when you have a well-funded competitor with deep pockets and a long-term strategy. Neo can afford to be aggressive because they're not just selling cars, they're building an entire ecosystem with long-term revenues that will come from things like battery swapping, charging, and software. Now I have to address the elephant in the room. I saw a comment from a skeptical user pointing out that Neo hasn't announced pre-sales uh, numbers yet and that's honestly a fair criticism. In today's market, silence on pre-order numbers means that they probably aren't extraordinary. But here's the thing and here's why I think about these companies as businesses, not just stock symbols. The success of the L90 isn't going to be just measured in the first day's pre-order. It's going to be measured in the sustained market share that it may or may not be able to gain over the next 12 to 18 months. Neo's playing a longer game. They're not trying to just create a one day splash. They're trying to build a sustainable position in the family SUV market. So what does this mean for investors? Well, I think that it means three things. First, Neo's showing that they can compete on price without sacrificing on technology. That 279,900 uh, Yuan starting price isn't just aggressive, it's sustainable because of their integrated approach to manufacturing and services. Second, the timing of this shows strategic thinking. They're not just reacting to Liato, they're trying to steal market share from their biggest competitor's most important product launch. Third, the infrastructure advantage is real and it's widening. While competitors are building charging networks, Neo's building a complete energy infrastructure ecosystem that's going to be really hard to replicate. Look. To me, the L90 launch so far is showing that Neos learned from their mistakes. Fast execution, competitive pricing, strong technology, and leveraging their infrastructure advantage. Is it gonna be a massive success? Well, we'll know in a few months. But what I can tell you is this kind of strategic approach is what separates winners from losers in the EV market. If able to, if Neo is able to execute on uh, their strategy properly. The Chinese EV market is clearly getting interesting and I think that we're going to see some very interesting changes in the market share numbers over the next few years. That's it for this episode of the Quartzart Financial Podcast. I hope I could have been uh, informative, insightful, at the very least entertaining. If I was any of those things, make sure you leave a comment down below, click the notification bell icon, uh, leave and uh, hit the like button. All your engagement really does go a long way and helping out the channel, and we'll see you in the next installment of the Courtside Financial Podcast. This is Obi, signing off. Have a great day. Goodbye.